Okay, longest day ever. Been waiting all week. And again, I know I'm not supposed to be living for the weekends, but somehow here we are. And I'm doing it again. I'm talking to myself. I'm watching the road, not my phone. Both hands are on the wheel. But yes, I'm talking to myself about how I don't live for the weekends, but I, I do. I do. Yep. Yep. Definitely we're living for the weekend. Spent all week planning my weekend. I mean, that doesn't mean I'm not doing fun things during the week, because I definitely am, but um, definitely plan my weekend all week. So, I'm really stoked. I'm going out to, um, to do Maiden Peak, and I think I'm going to throw in, thanks to um, a friend on Instagram, um, I'm going to throw in, oh God, what's it called? something else and I can't remember the name of it right now living hope nope living oh no um oh god it's something he'll 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 remind me um but I'm gonna throw that in for more mileage and then I'll probably sleep close to Gold Lake and um I, I know a lot of fly fishing happens there. I'm not going to get to do that because I've yet to be trained on fly fishing. I can tie flies like nobody's business, but I haven't been taught yet. So YouTube has not been very helpful. I think it's something you have to learn by doing. Anyway, that's not the point. I'm not fly fishing this weekend, but it's on the list of to do for soon. But um, yeah, I'm heading out and um, I'll probably do a couple more videos before I get to the, the dead zone. Um, because, well, it makes driving to these places go by a lot faster. And, um, of course, everybody's just sitting here waiting on the edge of their seat on a Friday to hear what I have to say. So, um, I hope everybody's doing something fun this weekend. Because, well, you know, we all worked hard all week. I mean, at least I think we did. And we all deserve it. So, um, eat good food, drink good beer or something that's not beer, and go do something fun. Okay. Well, it looks like I've still got a nice little hour drive, so I figured we'd just, like, chat for a while. I'd ramble on and on, and then you'll be like, why is this girl talking so much to herself? Um, but I think it's going to make the drive go by faster, so I think we're just going to have to suffer through this. Um, there seems to be an obnoxious amount of people out on this road. I'm on 58 right now, and it's beautiful, but I, I feel like everybody's going to the same place I am, and if that's the case, I'm gonna be pissed, because I'm doing this alone to not be around people. That's not true, I love people. But man, I just, what if there's nowhere for me to sleep? Anyway, every car in front of me has kayaks, canoes, paddle boards. I feel like I did this wrong. Maybe they're not running through the woods for six hours. Maybe I'm, yeah, maybe I'm doing it wrong. No, they're, do, they're doing it wrong. I'm not doing it wrong. Assholes. Don't mean that. Just kidding. It's a rude thing to say. Just wish there wasn't so many people out here. But yeah, I'm just, uh, another weekend of solo adventuring. I wish I had one of those cute little vans, you know, like where I could sit up and not hit my head. Well, that's not true. I don't hit my head. I'm not that tall. Let's not flatter myself. <laughs> but um, I feel like I could just do so much more in a van. Nothing weird. I'm just saying, like, I could put up lights and shelving. I could do that now, probably. And if, I, if it was taller and had more windows, I'd probably need curtains, which I should probably should get curtains now because it's probably inappropriate. I do a lot of sleeping in here. And what if somebody's just sitting outside my car just watching me like a weirdo? And I wouldn't even know because I'm sleeping. If I can sleep anywhere, I'm like a cat. I did get a um, little inflatable mattress that'll also be for backpacking. But um, turns out it takes like, it says five breaths, but it's like, it's like nine. And then you get all lightheaded. But then it's just, it's all full. And then you just pull the little na the knobby do, and it um, deflates. So it's pretty great. Um, but I think that my sleeping arrangement is going to be a lot more comfortable now. 
because I'm on a phone pad now, but um, the, the back of my car is really, really hard. It is not comfortable. Like, I feel like the ground probably would have um, more comfort than what my Jeep is providing. No offense, sweet, sweet Sherman. But, um, so I have now the foam pad and the inflatable mattress. So, um, Amazon said it's like sleeping on a cloud, so we'll see. Although, if you're on a cloud, wouldn't you just, like, fall right through? I don't want to fall right through. I want to feel like I'm, you know, comfy. Anyway, I'm just driving. So is everybody else. But I'm hoping that when I get to the top of, uh, get to the top of Maiden Peak that I'll be able to see everything because it's supposed to be, I think, a lot like Chenandir where you can see, um, like a 360 degree view. And, um, I know that, um, there used to be some kind of watchtower up at the top. Uh, so I know that's not there anymore, but I think that it's supposed to be a really good location to see everything, which was why there was a watchtower there. Um. But with all the smoke and haze, I don't know how much of the... God, something smells awful. Like somebody's car is just like spitting out sulfur. Like a volcano. It smells awful. Somebody's got to get that checked. Oh, God, I hope it's not my car. I've been doing a lot of driving. And I hate driving. Like, I... I if, if I was a rich person, I'd give all my money away. But I would save some to be driven around. Because I hate it. I'm always afraid I'm going to break down... Although, if I had money, I'd just keep my car in perfect shape or just keep rotating them out. And then I'd never have to worry about them breaking down. That's not really the point. The point is, is I hate driving. I'm always afraid I'm going to break down. And if I break down in the places that I drive with no service, I'm screwed. Is what it is. Anyway, I'm going to take a little break from this because everybody keeps touching on their brakes and I, there's nobody in front of them. They should just be going. It's Friday. I'm not going to get all huffy. Okay. It Bye. seems like I'm going to be on this road for the rest of my life because the person who's holding up all of traffic is going 45 miles an hour in a 55. Because it's such a treacherous, windy road, Highway 58. So, I may not make it in time for daylight. I'm just going to have to park my car somewhere and hope I'm, you know, not in the road. So, I went to Chevron. Um, fill up my car because in case I get lost and I have to drive around forever I'm gonna need to have gas for that but I stopped there and this lady she's getting her gas filled up and she looks at me and she goes why do you have so many tattoos I don't know you like that I was just like why don't why don't you have any tattoos and she just looked at me like I was an idiot what's wrong with my tattoos and like what century is this like, now it's not weird. Now it's weird if you see somebody without tattoos. Idiot. Okay, I didn't mean that. Oh, that that little Suzuki pulled over. That's nice. Now they can go... Oh, no. Now the person behind them is going slower than... Oh, I get it. When somebody pulls off the road, you have to come to a complete stop. Yeah, that makes sense. Ooh, Hampton Campground. Okay. Well, that's a backup, but it's right on the... Right on the railroad tracks, and... I slept at Hardesty, and I will tell you, I know it says no overnight camping, but I did it anyway because I'm a rebel. Just kidding. Park Rangers, I didn't do that. But, um, joke was on me because, uh, the train goes by, like, every hour, and it was loud. And I swear, I've never seen the, tra the train during the day, but, of course, when I'm sleeping, that's when the train's gotta pass by all the time. So, yeah, I didn't sleep. But, um, yeah, the tattoo lady, or the no tattoo lady, she was just so offended by my tattoos. It's not like I have a, a gang signs, unless you, you think pine needles are a form of gang sign, of, like, hug a tree or else. So, <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> anyway, so I'm just going to be driving for forever because, oh, no, we're going 60 miles an hour now. Okay. All right, well, I'm done with you now. So I was kind of thinking about it today, how weird it is that, um, you know, most, a lot of people want to be comfortable. Most people want to be comfortable. I want to be comfortable. But, um, ultra runners or trail runners or any kind of, um, extreme sport or anything that you have
have to exert a lot of energy for a long period of time. Um, it's just funny that people who do those things go out of their way to be uncomfortable. Um, like if I'm doing a, a, a long run and I'm comfortable the whole time, like I don't feel like I'm doing it right. If I'm not, like I want my legs to be so heavy when I'm done and I want to be so sore and I don't want to feel like I have much energy left because otherwise I don't feel like I did it right. Um, I didn't, um, I, w I didn't do my best effort out there. And it's just funny that, like, I remember finishing my first ultra and it was um, the Go Beyond uh, Smith Rock Ascent. And, God, I've never been in so much pain in my life. Um, I just remember taking my shoes off and going, why are they full of blood? Like, I didn't, I didn't understand, um, mostly because, you know, I was, I was a newbie and like, I didn't, I did a lot of training on road and I did a lot of training at Lacamas Lake, which is beautiful, but it's more like a really, really soft, pretty path. And it's, a lot of it's concrete and, well, some of it is, and the other parts are like really, really fine gravel, um, dirt, like it's not it's just like a road run with a view and to me I was like oh I'm on a trail it's, it's good training and um, uh, so I remember getting out of my first like actual trail uh, like long run and not understanding why my entire body was rebelling against all of it um, everything hurt and God like I I was breathing so hard the whole time and I was like what is going on and um, if I would have done that the entire time of training, like, I probably wouldn't have suffered so badly out there. Um, but Smith Rock kicked my ass. It was, I wasn't prepared, and I'd been training in a nice, cool, shaded area, and you get out there and you're exposed. And um, I remember I was using my water to cool myself off instead of to actually drink. And by the time I got to the last aid station, I was so broken and I barely remember it and I remember they let me go I begged and um, I remember getting like a mile in after that aid station and I was told that the last five miles was downhill and I know it's all about perspective and in comparison yeah it was a lot of downhill but um, my legs weren't working so to me even like a flat surface felt like an uphill um, I was struggling. Luckily, I had somebody who stayed with me um, and got me to the finish. But, God, that feeling. And it's like, it's so easy to just be comfortable. It's um, really easy to lead, lead a very comfortable life and never be uncomfortable. But I think that that, that steals a lot of um, your ability to, to build character. I don't want to be comfortable. I know that my toolbox is a little bit um, is a little bit better for um, doing ultra running and always having something that I'm working towards um, because otherwise I know that when I'm given something new at work um, I'm uncomfortable like if I'm not super confident in what the task is if I'm gonna look stupid or if I think I might fail it makes me so uncomfortable and could you imagine a world where I feel that a lot, but I'm not prepared to, to deal with it because I haven't practiced. I, I've led a very, uh, very uh, cush, comfortable life. I don't do anything that makes me uncomfortable and I don't break a sweat and I binge watch whatever I want anytime I want to, which sounds amazing, but that's not going to get me to be the person that I want to be. And I'd love to be the person who somebody hand something to me that is so uncomfortable but I know I need to take care of it and I don't crawl inside of myself <laughs> um that would be nice but um and I, I think each thing I train for each season I feel like I'm getting um more and more tools to learn how to deal with that um anyway that's my little soapbox on being uncomfortable and how it's good for you